recording. Um, thank you, Ryan, for participating. Uh, so I'm not going to keep everyone's time uh, more than I have to. Our presenter tonight is Lucas presenting on women in space history. So I'll let him take it away. Hello, uh, my name is Lucas. You guys know me. My presentation tonight is on women in space history which is a topic very near and dear to my heart because I am in fact a woman. <laughs> okay. Um, so we're gonna start off with Valentina Tereshkova. She was born in 1937, um, north of Moscow, Russia. Her parents both migrated from Belarus and her father died in the Finnish Winter War during World War II. Um, while she was employed as a textile worker in her 20s, she simultaneously trained as a competitive parachutist. And because of her experience in parachuting, she was selected to be an astronaut. And because of this, she is the first and youngest woman to ever go to space. And she's still the only woman to have gone on a solo space mission. And as of now, she holds the rank Major General, which is our equivalent of a Brigadier General. And she had previously held a government official role in the um, Communist Party. Um, Luka, we're not seeing your screen if you're sharing it. Oh, um, uh, ooh, it's, can you see it now? No, we're still seeing oh. your picture. Oh, um, I... I'm seeing the screen. I think that might be something on your end, Deanna. Okay, cool. So you can see the slides, Josh? Yes, yes, I can. Okay. Um, do you want me to continue or, Deanna, do you want me to wait until you have it? No, I'm good, go ahead. Okay. So while she was um, training to be a cosmonaut, some of her colleagues would refer to her as Gagarin in a skirt because Yuri Gagarin was the first person to ever go to space and um, she was a woman and it was the 60s and women didn't do much um, according to the men at that time of uh, especially in their careers. Um, next up we have Svetlana Savitskaya. She was born in 1948 and she was the second woman in space uh, 19 years I believe after um, Valentina, and she is the first ever woman to complete an extravehicular activity or a spacewalk. Her father was a highly decorated pilot in World War II. And something really interesting about her is she began parachuting at age 16. And by her 17th birthday, she'd already had over 450 jumps, which personally I think is pretty terrifying. Um, she also has an asteroid named after her, the 4118 Svetak. And she has uh, 14 World Aeronautics Foundation records. Now we have the iconic Sally Ride. Um, she was born in 1951 to parents who are elders in the Presbyterian Church. Um, in the 90s, she led two outreach programs that allowed middle school students to request images of the Earth and the Moon. And before that, she was the first American woman in space, and she's logged over 330 hours in space. She co-founded a company called Sally Ride Science, which produces science programs and publications for young girls, um, mostly elementary and middle school. And after her death in 2012, it was no, it became known that her lifelong partner was Tam O'Shaughnessy, who was her co-founder of Sally Ride Science, and she is the first known LGBT astronaut. Um, she died in 2012 of pancreatic cancer. While she was training and furthering her career with NASA, she was subject to a lot of media attention because of her gender and she was asked a lot of really personal invasive questions and one of them she quoted was do you weep when things go wrong on the job and she told them very confidently she goes i only think 
of myself in one way, and that is as an astronaut. Next, we have Catherine D. Sullivan. She was born in 1951, and she started off exploring the ocean, and she has a bachelor, does a bachelor's degree in earth science and a PhD in geology. She is a retired naval captain, and last year, she released a book called Handprints on Hubble about her experience deploying the Hubble Space Telescope in 1990. She was the first American woman to do an extravehicular activity uh, just months after Savitskaya did in uh, 1983, I believe. Up next is Mae Jemison. She was born in 1956 to an engineer and an elementary school teacher. Something really cool about her is she entered high school at 12 years old and she entered Stanford University at 16. She double majored at Stanford in chemical engineering and African studies. And before her selection with NASA, she worked as a doctor for the Peace Corps. Um, she also appeared on an episode of Star Trek The Next Generation after her space flight and has several honorary doctorates. So she, has a bunch of doctorates, but she didn't have to do all the work, which I think is really cool. Next is something really interesting. Is uh, This is Sunita Williams. She was born in 1965. She's the first and only woman, I believe, to have run a marathon in space. She was born in Maine to Indian and Slovenian parents, and her father is a neuroanatomist. Uh, she was deployed for Operation Desert Shield, and she was one of the first astronauts for commercial space flights announced in 2015. She completed the Boston Marathon in space in 2007, as seen pictured below the text, because she had previously signed up for it, and then she was selected to go to space, and she went, uh, she was on the International Space Station, and she completed the marathon there while watching her other competitors run the race with her. Um, she also appeared on an episode of Dog Whisperer with her dog Gorby, who is named after Mikhail Gorbachev, Gorbachev, the last leader of the USSR. And he is a Jack Russell Terrier. I wish I could have found a picture of him. Next, we have Christina Koch and Jessica Mayer. They are the most recent astronauts on this list. They both returned to Earth this year. Uh, Jessica Mayer being the most recent, she returned to Earth on April 17th. Um, and together they did the first all-female spacewalk. Uh, Christina Coach spent three and a half years in the Antarctic while she was studying and she experienced negative 111 degrees while in the Antarctic, and Jessica Mayer has a PhD in marine biology. Um, in an interview with Vanity Fair, she talked about herself returning to Earth mid-quarantine, and she's, she's, she quotes, it's been seven months and I can't hug anyone, I'm a hugger. And I, um, yeah, she, um, she returned April 17th of this year, this month actually. And next up is the coolest one on this list, Dorothy Metcalf Lindenberger, who is a wildcat. She taught high school in Vancouver until 2005. And she was selected that year to take a multi-purpose multi logistics module to the ISS which is something that transfers cargo to and from it. Um, she was the mission, mission specialist. She coached high school cross country and science Olympiad while she was a teacher. And she, before she was at Central, she received a BA in, geo, in geology, my apologies, uh, from Whitman University and received teaching certification from CWU in 1999. You can catch her photo outside of Dean Hall and maybe other places on campus. That's the only place I've seen it. But there are lots of 
famous alumni around campus, and she is one of them. Um, that is all I have for today. Are there any questions? Okay, hold on. I'm going to unmute everybody. Josh is going to remain. There he goes. So, um, Ryan, if you have any questions, you should be able to ask them at this point. Okay, <laughs> I guess no. <laughs> okay, Good thank job. you guys. Thanks, Josh. Thank you guys so much. When is the next star party, Josh? Oh, sorry, caught you mid sneeze. <laughs> Um, that is a good question. Let me exit full screen real quick. Uh, the next star party is going to be on May 12th. Okay. Same bat channel. Huh? <laughs> Never mind. You're too young. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever watch the old Batman, the original Batman, the at, the end of every, <clears throat> at the end of every episode, it's same bat channel, same bat time. So anyway, so um, I'll send out the link for that once we get the promotional materials for that ready to go and you'll, you'll be able to catch it. Um, Ryan, if you want to subscribe, uh, Josh, how does someone subscribe to the Astronomy Club mailing list? Well, to subscribe to the Astronomy Club mailing list, you would have to visit the Astronomy Club's website cwastro.wixsite.com slash central. If it were anyone else, I would put it into the chat, but because it's Ryan and Lucas, they both should know by now what their job is. Uh, <laughs> going to the website, and then when you scroll down to the bottom of any page on our website, it will be a subscribe uh, sign up where you can put in your email to be notified about our uh, information emails that we get sent, that get sent out. I think that worded that right. All right. Well, thanks, you guys. Great presentation. Thank uh, you. I will see you guys in three weeks, I believe is, right? Is it three weeks or two weeks? Josh, I don't have the calendar in front of me. Uh, two weeks, actually. Two weeks. I will see yeah. you all in two weeks. All right, guys. Be safe. Uh-huh. You too. Don't do nothing stupid. <laughs> I'll do my best. <laughs>